welcome to the Car Sim and Race Driver Show, presented by Hugh Hattrick. Here at Bathurst in the course, my very special guest, Peter Golly, Rascal, Rabbit, Josh Martin. It's great to have you back on the show. Try fast and try not to crash. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Car Sim and Race Driver Show. And tonight we actually have a motorsport presenter and celebrity. It is Chris McCarthy. Chris, welcome to the show. How are you doing? Yes, thank you, Hugh. Thank for ha- thanks for having me on. How are you doing? I'm very well and very excited um, to have a commentator uh, who has been on television um, that you can actually see. So we're going to find all find out all about that and how it all started. Um, but it's great to have you on the show. And uh, probably our first question that always comes up is, how did your kind of love of motorsport and your motorsport career begin? Um, I guess the first experience I had, it, actually a friend of mine took me um, go-karting when I was probably about 12 years old. Um uh, and I went to a, a track in in London uh, called Revolution Karting. Um, and yeah, yeah I, I loved it. First time I did it, really enjoyed it. I, I used to, before that, I was kind of into football, um, cricket as well. I did taekwondo. So I, I, was a, I was a real sports person ever since I, I was probably three years old. Um, never knew I liked racing as much as I did. But, um, but yeah, I went down, loved it. And from there, I just sort of wanted to do it more and more. And eventually, I then went on to race karting at a um, you know club level, national level, and uh, and so on. So I did I did karting for for five years uh, up until I was about seventeen years old. So um, so yeah, it was I, I I just loved it, and that's that's where my love of the sport came from. My, my family don't actually have any history in it. You know, uh, my dad was always a, a you know an F, a loose F one fan. Um, but ever since I went that first time, you know, I watched all the all the F1. You know, I, my first championship was when Lewis won that in Sao Paulo. Um, and yeah, that was my when I had my first year of racing. And, you know, and that was that really got me got me into the sport. So. It's an amazing sport, isn't it? Especially if you've seen mm-hmm. it live. Um, have you been to a few Grand Prix live as well? I've only been lucky enough to go to one and that was on a practice day. Uh, it was I was work. It was when I was working with the championship, and we had uh, as a prize for a few of our drivers, we took them along to a um, to Silverstone. It's it's a shame because they did then offer me tickets for Saturday Sunday, but I was I was commentating somewhere else, so so I couldn't oh. go. But I've never actually been. I used to go to my dad used to take me to uh, the A1 GP when that oh, was yeah. running. We used to go to the World Series by Renault, which was fantastic because it was free. Uh, and I used to love the Formula Renault Euro Cup um, yeah. racing there because uh, there was always about 40 of them on the grid. Um, yeah. And we used to go to the DTM at Brands Hatch sometimes as well. So, yeah, yeah, t- touring cars as well. You know, we went we went to a lot. So, yeah, I was quite lucky that my dad took us to a lot. Um, but we never really went to any Grand Prix. We, we, we kind of stuck to the other stuff. Yeah, I was going to say because the Formula was it the World Renault Series that you that you said because they, were they like a V10 engine or something? Were they, were they like three sort of V10s and some of those? Yeah, were quite, I, they were quite quite decent. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm not that mechanically minded, I'll be honest, but uh, I can't remember what they were, but they they were very loud and they were very yeah, fast. I think they were based on the old V10 engines. Yeah, I, I think so. I think so. I mean, they weren't. They were kind of like an F2 level. You know, it was yeah. World, World Series by Renault three point five, wasn't it? That's what it was called. Um, and yeah, and it was fantastic. Yeah, 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 that was it. Yeah, and you had drivers from that that were always going into F one, uh, yeah. but they had the Formula Renaults and they had the Clios there as well, and then they had the the World Series Championship. And it was because it was free. You used to get probably about one hundred and thirty, one hundred and forty thousand turn up to Silverstone for race day. Uh, yeah. Probably not far off. Yeah, about one hundred and twenty thousand. Not far what you would get off a Grand Prix weekend itself because it was yeah, yeah, the, the, you could just, you could just, yeah you could just turn up and drive in you know it was the first first to turn up got in so it, it was it was great for for racing it's a shame it ended really because um because I love to go in every year yeah yeah no it's, I, I think Renault have done a lot for the sport to be fair they even came mm-hmm. up to, to my old uh, country of Scotland they came up to Knock Hill 
um, and they had a big Renault day. But the only thing that they gave mm. us was, was go karts, electric go karts for free. Um, so maybe a wee bit shortchanged in, the, in that one, but uh, um, but no, it's it, they do do a lot for the sport, and it's great to see all the different championships. But um, so you've done a lot of go karting, uh, which is fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you now, in fact, you would you you've just recently got a new job. And would you like to tell all the viewers as to what that job is? Yeah, yeah. So I've, I was part. It, it got announced last week. I'm on the um, on the presenting team for uh, Motorsport TV Live, uh, which is you know kind of a new a new well the first ever motorsport news channel. Um, much needed for the sport, I think. But yeah, it's a real privilege to be a part of of uh, such a talented presenting presenting team. Um, Rachel Downey, who's done loads in in all kind of sports, really. Diana Binks has been, you know, in in Le Mans pit lanes and so on for for years and years. And and Bryn Lucas, me and him have worked together quite a lot. Um, he's commentating this year on Super Formula for Red Bull TV. So, so yeah, wow. it's a, you know, it's a gr- it's a real great team to be a part of. Um, and yeah, it's it, I'm more used to being doing commentating than uh, presenting or news anchoring, if you like. But uh, yeah, it's, it's great to almost step across and, and do that and and have something in the week where you're still talking about motorsport and then you can go and commentate on the weekend. So, so yeah, it's been, it's been fantastic. And we had our first, probably our first big guest this week in, in Juan Pablo Montoya. And that's, that was, a you know, to have a 17 minute exclusive interview with him was, was amazing. Um, and yeah, it's, it's just going to get better and better at the moment. We're doing three bulletins a day, but the, the plans are are big for it. So, so yeah, just watch this space. It's, it's much needed for the sport. I think everyone's going to really enjoy it. And when you have to interview uh, a big, big name racing driver, like, like Montoya, um, do you have time beforehand to kind of uh, prepare your questions? Are you kind of guided as to what kind of things you're going to be talking about? Or are you left with a bit of freedom to ask what you would like? Um, uh, well, with, with someone like him, uh, you know, people like that level, they they're used to doing so many interviews. You don't you don't really need to send them what you're going to ask them. You do your your preparation. You decide where you want where you want the interview to go. So for for his interview, we we you know I decided we decided to talk about the F1 um, and get his opinion on Verstappen versus Hamilton, which has been great. Uh, and then we wanted to talk about IndyCar because the Indy 500 is coming up, and he's he's racing in it again. Uh, wow. And then I wanted to I wanted to talk to him about his son because I I commentated on his son uh, in FIA karting, and then I I commentated on his son winning in Vegas in 2018, which was really cool. So he's doing Italian F4 this season, and I, yeah, I, I wanted to talk a little bit about about Sebastian and and how he's getting on this year. So yeah, I mean. It you you do prepare, but at the same time, it's it's like what you're doing now. You just have a conversation with them and and yeah. see where it takes you. Often you'll have loads of questions written down, and then you you just throw it out the window because the conversation you're having just leads you in another direction. So, um, so yeah, I, I you know you you can have questions ready, you know, if you need to fall back on them, but uh, when when you just go go in and, and speak to them, you know, very, yeah, loosely. That tends to work better, and they they tend to open up a bit more. So, um, but yeah, that that one was great. He's a real great guy to interview. I have to say, I think he was kind of known for that, wasn't he, in the sport when he did it. Yeah. His uh, his press conferences were quite famous. Um, yeah, and he's, he's, he's a pretty straight talking, talking guy. Yeah, he speaks his mind, so it, he's yeah, a great person to speak to. It's quite refreshing, actually, isn't it, to have someone who yeah. just says what they think and and gives you a good answer so that you're not it's not the kind of party line or the company line um but he actually says what he thinks and he was a good driver i always think he kind of left him yeah. too early. um i think he had a bit of a he was in McLaren for so long and then williams and things but was it was yeah uh, it was williams wasn't it um yeah and uh, and, uh, and but yeah no he, was, he seemed like always a, a very competitive chap and he always kind of looked at f1 and, and you could immediately recognize who was good and who wasn't who was yeah. good and who really had to beat and show that you could beat um, to kind of be regarded as as a as a great driver, um, but no, that sounds fantastic. So, because you've done obviously a lot of commentary before this new job, how did you manage to get into commentary? How did all that start? I, it started actually with a bit of a uh, yeah, a bit of, bit of a sad story in a way. I mean, I I had to stop racing because I was diagnosed with epilepsy at um, seventeen years old, and it was it was heartbreaking for me at that time. I was racing in national championship in the British championships. We were halfway through the season. Um, we were fighting for the title in uh, in a club championship, and yeah, all of a sudden, I, I, it was in August. It was in August 2012. I was at a race and and out of the blue had a had a seizure, and and they diagnosed me with epilepsy 
they took away my race license for five years and which is just a standard procedure uh, like they take away your driving license as well for a year and I wasn't far from getting my first car at that time so yeah it was it was pretty um yeah it was, it was pretty annoying you know pretty disappointing for me having to you know walk away from from racing but I just started college doing tv and film at that time and I went back the next month to, to go and watch watch my friends racing again and I just decided at that moment, I think we were dri- I was driving back with my dad and I decided I didn't want to, I couldn't just walk away from the sport. I'm useless with tools. So mechanic in was never for me. Um, mm-hmm. So I, I had access to cameras. I was doing TV and film at college and uh, with a couple of friends, I just sort of decided maybe we should go and film, film at the track I used to race at. You know, the races there never used to get filmed. Uh, mm-hmm. we, I could use it for my coursework. We, we charged them you know pennies to go and do it and th- yeah they they agreed to go and to go and do it they agreed to let us do it and we went along set some cameras up and, and filmed the races and we did it for a couple of months and then there was no commentary on it and I needed a I needed some commentary on it and I was going to reach out to someone I knew knew was a commentator but my dad kind of talked me into just giving it a go myself so um yeah. so I tried it and and yeah I didn't know that I was ever going to be any good at it but um, but yeah, I just, I actually really enjoyed it when I was doing it. It's, it's quite funny because when I used to race, I always used to enjoy watching the other races. Um, and I know a lot of people do that, but I, I, I had a, I, I don't know. I kind of just used to love watching kart racing. Um, yeah. so for me, yeah, go, getting to, to commentate on it seemed like when, when I started doing it, it seemed like actually a bit of a, a job I'd really enjoy. So. I mean, it's kind of crazy because I, I, I was watching some kart racing. My, my son is seven years old. And I was saying, oh, this is the kind of thing that we could do, you know, because mm-hmm. he's almost old enough now to, to do the go-karts. And most, most places are going to be about eight years old before they'll let you drive a kart um, in the kind of arrive and drive type karting kind of uh, uh, clubs that are out there. Um, so I wanted to let him see what it was like. And he was like, you know, big eyes because it, it's so fast. Um, mm-hmm. And it's kind of crazy, isn't it? I mean, the, the, literally the places can change dramatically within fractions of a second. Uh, yeah, because they're all they all going to the one corner almost at the same time, um, and it's and as they bump each other, and it's all it's it's kind of very much um, it's so live. You kind of you, if you blink almost, you'll miss um, quite a bit of it, isn't it? It's it's how do you yeah. it? It seems to be much faster um, than other sports, but you know it seems to be that you've really how do you how do you kind of keep up with it all? Uh, yeah, that's um, it, it's pretty hard. Um, yeah, when you're commentating, I mean, my first live race was the British Kart Grand Prix, which is a pretty big event. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it, it was a bit of just a bit of luck, really, that the the, the guy who's done it for years and years, Henry, but that uh, could couldn't do it that month, um, and it just you know I just what happens to to get asked to do it, and there's grids of you know 36 drivers, uh, and you've just got to try. You 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 sort of get into a way of picking the difference when they're all in a pack. You know, you some of them sit a little bit differently in the car. Uh, some of them hold the wheel at the top, and some hold it at the bottom. Little things like that help you recognise them when they're in a in a pack. You know, some drivers are taller, some are smaller. Obviously, in a car, they're all the same size and the same shape. So in karting, you have to go off their uh, their size or their posture. Uh, or, as well as the colours of the car, obviously. Um, but yeah, it, I, I was able to pick drivers. I, I was actually able to pick drivers up pretty easily because I raced for five years. I kind of could tell the body language of a driver. Um, yeah. I could read when they're about to make a move. I could realize. I could read when they were nervous. Uh, just through all the things I used to do, um, and, and that really helped me with with commentating in it because you could see a move coming from two corners away. Uh, and I, that's probably the same for any racing driver who's done single seaters or GTs. They can, I've often found when I commentate with, with someone who's done it, they can see when a move is coming from a mile off. Um, yeah. For example, when I did uh, Gran Turismo of Jimmy Broadbent, he could always tell just, just what was going to happen next because uh, yeah. of his experience. Uh, and so, yeah, it, for me, commentating on karting was yeah it, it fitted perfectly for me to as a starting point because because i'd done it for so long yeah and w- w- did, w- when you started commentating did you ever have any particular commentators that you kind of wanted to model yourself on or perhaps inspired mm-hmm. you um you know in that kind of career well there was a guy called ken walker uh and he was the murray walker of karting 
he he did everything. He was like Murray was. He was loved by everyone across the world. It's just funny they had the same last name. Um, yeah. And and I, I absolutely loved his stuff. He did the race called the as well as doing all the the biggest world world and European championships. He did a race called the Rotax uh, Grand Finals which is a bit like the World Cup of Karting. You have to qualify to get there and you represent your country when you're there. Uh, wow. And it's kind of a battle of the countries. Yeah, it's really cool. And you all turn up and you have the same cart. Yeah, the cart is there when you arrive. It, it's a bit of a party. It's, it lasts a whole week uh, and it's wow. a bit of a party atmosphere. And um, I used to love listening to him doing that. And I tried to base my style off him a bit. He had... He was quite, as well as be, as well as being very knowledgeable. He also had quite a relaxed tone as well, mm-hmm. um, so he he didn't get too too excited in the big moments, if that makes sense. You know, he was able to um, to stay stay keep keep calm during even big moments in a race or when someone had, had had a big crash. So, yeah, I, I, I liked him, and as well as that, I, I used to love listening to Will Buxton doing uh, oh, yeah. GP, doing GP two. Um, uh, I thought so. That, those two for me were the two that I really, uh, when I just started out commentating, were the two that I really, I really looked up to definitely. And and James Allen was was doing F one, and I thought, you know, I thought he was great. You know, listening to him commentate Lewis Hamilton win the win the world title was great. So yeah, I'd say probably those those three were were the three. If I had to pick three out, that I, I kind of based myself off. I always remember that 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 race. I was I lived in Edinburgh at the time. And on that last couple of laps, when Hamilton was behind, I had my kind of hands over my yeah. head, you kind know, of waiting for it, you know. And in that final corner, when he goes past Glock, and you hear Brundle shout mm. out, "Is that Glock? Is that Glock?" Mm, and, it yeah. is. and he's yeah. true. And in, I could I could barely believe it. Um, yeah. And then that that was the thing. And of course, the crowd was cheering because Massa had already taken the checkered flag. Um, yeah. And that thing, and it was it was kind of crazy. Um, yeah. What's been your, your kind of craziest moment? Because you've been all over the world. Uh, commentating um, for different formula. What's been one of your kind of the best moments or best places to visit and then do a race as well? Um, uh, there's been, uh, I'd say Tokyo was amazing, uh, a place I never thought I'd ever go to. Um, and it was Gran Turismo. I, I got to do a few rounds of the, the first year they ran the, the world tour. Uh, Tom Brooks uh, asked me to, you know, I, I, he asked me to fill in for him for a few races. And I was quite lucky that those few races were Nürburgring, Tokyo, Monaco, and Las Vegas. So I'd say... Yeah, Tokyo was great because we were there for a whole week. Uh, oh. And we had, um, we had two days off. Um, and me and Jimmy, you know, we just had two days of these guys showing us around Tokyo. Uh, and that was that was amazing. Uh, it's such an amazing place. The food is incredible out there. Like, I never thought I'd like that Japanese kind of food. But uh, the the cool thing was as well that we the reason we are we we had two days off is because they asked us to stay longer because they set up two events um, which weren't supposed to happen when we arrived. But they had the Toyota Gazoo racing drivers come down and race each other on Gran Turismo in front of a live oh, wow. audience. And they asked me and Jimmy to go and commentate it. And then they also had an event where they paired up esports drivers, Japanese esports drivers with Japanese racing drivers. So people like yeah. um, Nide Fukuzumi was one of them uh, who was in GP2 yeah. at that time. And that was that was really cool as well. You know, and it was a, a race where the the rules were so crazy that it was always going to go to the last corner. And there was a big, big, big shunt at the final corner. And um, <laughs> yeah, me and Jimmy were just were just laughing. <laughs> so, yeah, that was great. And Vegas was great. I mean, it. I was quite lucky with that because I was there with Gran Turismo. We were commentating in a nightclub, which was, yeah, <laughs> bizarre, bizarre. Um, yeah. And then we, I, I, there was also a race called Rock the Rio, which I mentioned earlier, which uh, Sebastian won. And that's a go-kart race uh, outside the Rio Hotel, which happens every year. Um, and I, I happened to be in Vegas on, you know, from the Sunday to the Thursday. And they said, well, we've got the kart race from Thursday to Thursday to Sunday. Why don't you just hop on over and come and do the kart race after you're done? So, so yeah, <laughs> it was uh, going, going fresh from an after party from Gran Turismo straight, straight to the Rio Hotel. And, and that, was, that was awesome because they... The hotel gave us the, the the presidential suite as our oh, wow. you know 
as our kind of hangout area, which had a which had a swimming pool on it. <laughs> and um, <laughs> yeah, it's it was cool. I mean, Vegas is so is so is such a cool place. But yeah, yeah. Uh, to to kind of wake up and go to the shower and hear the carts going round. <laughs> it was, yeah, that's kind of yeah, amazing. Yeah, nice. bizarre. So, yeah, I'd say that those two places for me stick out. Fantastic. Well, we've had lots of questions, and I know that the, 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 the guys in the chat and the viewers will be saying, come on, Hugh, you need to ask these questions. So I thought <laughs> oh, I had a few questions to ask you first of all, and then I thought we'll get round to asking the questions from the chat. So here we go. Um, we've had lots of people um, watching here just now from all over the world. Um, and the first one is from GT Plus Racing, which is, um, do you watch any particular sim racing or esports? Uh, well, I yeah, I commentate on Le Mans esports, um, and I got to commentate on the Le Mans virtual twenty four hour, which was an amazing event. But I love watching the Gran Turismo events. I think they they are amazing. Uh, the guys there just put on such a good show. Uh, it's a shame they can't do that with restrictions now. Um, but having worked on it and knowing how much of a big operation it is, I, I, I I'm sure any esports fan has seen that clip. Uh, I think they were in Australia and it was a race that went down to the last corner, last lap. And they, they put up a video of the drivers. Uh, you can just hear the drivers, uh, you know, who had headsets on so you can get their reactions. And that was, that was amazing. I, I, I think that's personally one of my, my probably my favorite to, to watch, uh, but there's so many out there in esports. There's so many different, uh, different series uh, it's you, you you can you can stick something on every night really and and, and watch yeah. something there's there's so many to choose from but if i had to pick a favor i'd say i'd say that but i you know i try and keep up with with other esports as much as i can uh i thought the formula e was good the the race at home challenge i, I liked i liked that f1 esports was is great as well and i liked what veloce did last year when they did their um when they did their ice when it was isolation and they did their series i thought that was really cool uh, you know, to see um, Ian Poulter racing Lando Norris. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah that, that was cool. That was really good. So I thought that was awesome. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. In fact, that goes on handily to our next question from uh, a chap called Keith Will Oni, all the way from Arizona in America. Um, uh, he said that he really enjoyed the Valencia Formula E race. Uh, he thought it was great, uh, but everyone else seems to hate it. And what do you think? What was your view on the, on the Valencia Formula E race? Do you think it was... A good race, or do you think it wasn't so good? Well, I, I, I was, I was really looking forward to that race um, because obviously I've, I've gotten really into Formula E this year. I have to say, uh, mm. I, th I think I was speaking to someone uh, about this the other day. I, I think that it was a race. Personally, I enjoyed the Sunday race. I thought it was great. Um, I think they need to do big tracks more. But as yeah. for the whole Saturday race, I think it needed to happen. I think people forget that we're, you know, over 70 years of F1 uh, and Formula E only been going for, but what is it, six or seven years now? So yes. I think, you know, if these kind of problems didn't happen to, uh, to say, F1 when they started, I know they were very different times, but I think you have to remember how, you know, how long they've been running for. They're, they've not been going long. They're still learning. They're bringing new cars out all the time. They're still learning about it. They brought in a new reg change now to uh, avoid that happening. And I, I just think it needed to happen for them to find out what it was because you can't – I don't think you can prepare for five safety cars uh, around yeah. Valencia. Yeah, no one ever thought that was going to happen. Uh, yeah. and none of the teams did, and the championship didn't either. I don't think they dealt with it great, pointing the finger at the teams and particularly Felix da Costa, but I think that they've dealt with it well now by bringing in a new um, – bringing in new rules which essentially is that after 40 minutes there will be no uh, cuts in re reductions in energy so that that's going to completely stop that from happening again so yeah, yeah. I, I just think it needed to happen yeah and i think i was going to say did it did it go on the old valencia grand prix track or was it a kind of mixture it no it was uh no it was changed so uh, i don't know what i, I, I can't, it a bit, I can't say the corner it. numbers yeah but when they do that sort of kink left and into a hairpin, that kind yeah. of became a chicane. And then they had a chicane in the um, in the middle of, the, well, just at the start of the start-finish straight, uh, oh, yeah. which created a bit of overtaking. Um, so, so, yeah. So, yeah, I, 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 it wasn't the full Grand Prix circuit, but it, it wasn't it's far cool. off it. I think they would do great, really well at Brands, Hatch. 
I think that'd yeah, be good. See, that's a perfect trend. Like, you know, the indie track or, or even the fuel track, maybe. Perhaps. Yeah, I, um, I think the brand's indie track would be amazing. I, I don't think it would ever work at Silverstone or Donington Park, even though they've tested there. I think mm-hmm. somewhere like Brands would be, yeah, I never thought of Brands before, but I, I think that would be awesome. Yeah. Yeah, because it's quite close and, and, and they can get a really good crowd there as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that, that, would be, that would be a thing. Oh, we've got another another question for you. Um, and this is again from GT Plus Racing saying, having worked in TV as well, um, uh, without naming names, um, have you come across any oversized egos, either for the channel or guests? Um, it was really bad in 2000 when I was working with Aussie Football. Um, it says GT Plus Racing, but how have you found it? Um, I, I mean, I, everyone I've worked with has been, has been, uh, yeah, it's been, it's been great, great to work with. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not really, I'm not really too sure how to answer that one. Uh, so unless, you, unless I'm the one that's the oversized <laughs> ego. I don't know. I know. Uh, <laughs> oh, Jimmy Broadbent's a nightmare. He, he requests too much. You need to push him to tell him to come on the show. Because I got in touch with him a wee while ago, and he said he would do it. Um, and, but his secretary said it might take a wee while. He's, he's, he's a racing driver now, isn't he? Like he, you know, he's in the title. He needs to come on. Um, but yeah, yeah he's he, anyway, he's great to work with. But um, no, no, I mean, I think you any anyone any event I've ever done, you always you know, if you the whole team, you all you all go out and have a good time together. You know, at the end of the day, which is always good fun. Um, but uh, I I haven't come across anyone that's yeah that's that's been a been a bit of a nightmare to work with but uh maybe maybe, <laughs> maybe that's because i've not made it to the top yet i don't know oh that's it and have you found when you're interviewing people especially because you've done commentary um did you have a chance as well at some of these other races to interview the drivers after you did the commentary so were you also kind of doing like the pit lane interviews or, or you know all the kind of driver interviews afterwards you would have a chance to meet a lot of the drivers yeah yeah you know i've one thing I always do when I'm doing a race is go into the garages and just ask, just ask to see the drivers. Um, yeah. One of the main reasons that is is to make sure I'm getting their names correct because <laughs> there's nothing <laughs> worse than saying someone, someone's name wrong. Uh, yeah. So I'll always go around to all the drivers and make sure that but um, that you, you can find out a bit about them. But, yeah, I've done, uh, like, press conferences and things like that um, with, with other championships uh, and, and pit lane interviews uh, and, yeah, and, and yeah, just post-race interviews that, that will then be added in into the show so yeah, yeah. you know I, I i enjoy speaking to the to, i i think speaking to a driver straight after a race is always cool because you um you know you can really you really get the emotion out of them then so yeah, so, yeah that's always good fun and we've got a great question here uh, from a good friend jonathan um he's saying has chris ever inflicted the curse of the commentator on a particular oh, of course, driver? Yeah. Of course. <laughs> loads of times Loads of time. I, I can't remember the last time it happened, but uh, it, it's it's happened to me loads. Yeah, uh, I'm not. I'm, I've not got to the point where I try not to cu- I curse anyone. I think if it's going to happen, it's going to happen. But um, but yeah, but yeah, I I know there's been a couple of instances when I've I've said someone was that you know they're easy going to win, and then next thing they they pull into the pit lane and. <laughs> and then uh, it's, it's all gone wrong for them. So, um, but yeah, yeah, it's, 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 it's definitely happened to me a lot of time. I think I had one one instance once it was a world final and there was a kid leading by, you know, half a lap. And I just, and I said, well, he's won the race. So let's forget about him. And then uh, he, and then he had a massive engine problem. I had to come in and it was like, wow. Okay. So yeah, I think, I think a lot of commentators now go never say never, you know, and that's because yeah. they've probably done that to someone at some point. So yeah, I have to say I started in the era, the kind of late eighties, and um, so it was still James Hunt um, and Murray Walker uh, doing Formula One, and they were always—I mean, they were immense, the two of them together doing these incredible commentaries. Um, and I always remember uh, watching that clip of James Hunt when I think it was Philip, Philip Alio. Um, almost took Nigel Mansell off. I think it was in Portugal, um, right. and, uh, and 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 Hunt had the uh, had the the microphone, and he said, "Oh, and there's Alio doing as he always does, almost crashing every time, you know." And and he he called, totally slated Alio, and and basically <laughs> said, all he does is crash, you know. And it <laughs> was the one. Um, what do you think of of the kind of older style commentators like Hunt? I mean, do you, I mean, they certainly had a place in that time, didn't they? They were so distinctive. And also people like Murray Walker. I mean, it's it's uh, it's hard not to like um, his style of commentating. Were you were you big fans of people like that? 
Yeah, I mean that it was a little bit before my time, but um, yeah, I, I I loved the the idea of his style. You know, like he was very casual. He didn't really uh, he. I think with James Honey, he he didn't have anyone to uh, you know impress anymore. He'd done all his all that work on track, and uh, he he just was just himself, you know. And I think if you're yourself, then that 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 is that, that gets picked up on by the people listening to you. Uh, likewise with Murray, he was just so passionate about the sport, um, and he had a unique style, didn't he? That everyone fell in love with, and 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 he and he made mistakes, and he didn't really. I wouldn't say he didn't care about it, but he he just acknowledged that that had happened and, and just kept going. So, um, yeah, I think I think people can get a little bit nervous about making mistakes too much. Where he clearly didn't do that; he just loved what he was doing and sometimes got a bit caught up in it. But you know that that happens all the time. Uh, and and James Hunt just just said it how it was. I think I think you need a bit of that. You know, you need to. Um, Sometimes it's easy to you don't want to get you don't want to criticize a driver, but ultimately you have to have an opinion. If you think yeah. the move they did was bad, then you have to go and say that. You can't just you know because you're then going to see them in the paddock in 20 minutes time. Go oh, <laughs> I don't know who to place the blame. And you you can't sit on the fence. I don't think. I think you and, unless it's a racing incident, but I think you have to have a say uh, and have an opinion. And if the the viewer if the listeners disagree with you, then that's then that's completely fine because you know. That there's always two sides to the story, isn't there? So, I, I think was it not when Schumacher um, uh, crashed into Villeneuve or tried to bump into him for the World Championship in '97, yeah. um, and Brundle said that that was a bad move. He said the wrong place, Michael, wrong place when he mm. tried to hit him at the hairpin. Um, mm. And suddenly after that, Schumacher wouldn't do an interview with him. Um, for yeah. ages, and he wouldn't do it. Yeah. And so, I suppose, but at the end of the day, he had to say it because it was so clearly obvious. Um, there's yeah. a real punt to try and, and, and stop Villeneuve from winning the championship. That was his only way of doing it, you know. But um, So I think, and people like to know, because then they know that you're being truthful to the sport and not just kind of going along with what you think is safe. I think in yeah. the moments, you have to be quite daring. Um, and, uh, and, and Yeah, and that's yeah. That's right. But, uh, and, and yeah. let's go on to a good question that we have here again. Um, from GT Plus Racing, it says, it sounds like you absolutely love your work. Um, are there any downsides or difficulties like time management or being slightly nervous? Uh, I mean, yeah, you, you know, nervous happens, like, especially if you, your first time doing a championship. So I did Formula Regional. I'm doing the Formula Regional European Championship by Alpine uh, this season. And the first, obviously we're supporting F1 for the first three rounds. And I knew there was a lot of people going to be tuning into that. I didn't know there would be as many as there was, but there was a lot of eyes on it. So the first round, I was a little bit nervous. Um, yeah, the first time I did Gran Turismo because we're in front of a big crowd or I did when I was in the Autosports show and we did the Le Mans Esports. Yeah, you, you, you do. You can get slightly nervous, um, but I think you have to embrace that and, and use that as energy to to just uh, and you just got to remember you're enjoying yourself um yeah, yeah but I, I i wouldn't really say there's you know there's there's too many downsides to it you know obviously when you're doing a 24 hour race they're they're pretty tiring <laughs> but um that's it is for the drivers as well so it's part of the experience isn't it so yeah i think you you have to go and in, in, enjoy it um yeah, the, the traveling. Some people don't like the whole traveling aspect, going back and forth. That was a bit of a nightmare last year because uh, it meant a lot of quarantining. But yeah. that was, that was twenty twenty, wasn't it? So yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't think there are uh, there are I don't think there are too many downsides. I, th I think um, yeah, I I, 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 I really enjoy it. So uh, I haven't really I couldn't really say a bad thing about doing it. So if there's any place around the around the world that you haven't been to so far that has big motorsport events on, mm. um, where would you like to go? What would be your ideal um, kind of trips to go and commentate on? Well, that's a tough question. Uh, I'm not too sure, actually. Um, have you been to Singapore? Have you been, I think you have no, been. I know. I almost got to go there, actually, with McLaren, but it, it didn't quite happen in the end. Um, but, yeah, that I mean, that would be an amazing event, wouldn't it, to yeah. go to? Uh, I, I'd love to go to Abu Dhabi. Actually, I, I just think that track looks so cool. Um, I think it starts in the in the sunlight in the sunset, and then it goes into. Yeah, it's, it looks amazing. I mean, yeah. it was a few years ago, when it was the Singapore Grand Prix, and it was that infamous wet race where all the action happened, and you could just tell it was going to be an incredible race um, because it's so humid, and then it starts to rain. Um, and I, I was I was actually finishing a, a shift at work, and I was desperate to race back. 
home to get to the, get the start. Um, and my brother, who lives over that, that side of the world, um, texts me and he says, oh, guess where I am? And, uh, and when I get home, he shows me the pictures. He's in a hotel in Singapore what, uh, what about to watch the race live and there's someone who's not, who's not even interested in formula one and he says um Hugh, is it worth me going down to watch this race and i said get yourself as close as you can you know of course it's yeah and um, so he went and he watched like one of the best ever singapore grand prix i've ever been uh, with that big crash on the yeah. first corner with verstappen and alonso and everybody yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And, Ferraris yeah. and the whole thing um and uh, so yeah so no, there he was so and i thought i can't believe the one grand prix he, he happens to just turn up at yeah, the business <laughs> is the Singapore one, you know, and, and probably yeah. one of the best places in the file there. But, um, but yeah, no, Singapore looks fantastic. I mean, I suppose you've been to places like Vegas, um, which must be absolutely amazing. Yeah. But, um, how about Miami? Because they've got a Grand Prix coming up next year. Uh, that I mean, be... Yeah, the track looks terrible. But, I mean, to go there would be great. I always wanted to do a kart championship called the Florida Winter Tour, and I, I, got, I almost got to do it once. But I'd say in terms of tracks, I, I'd love to go and do the Macau Grand Prix. I think that would be an amazing event to do. So yeah, I'd say if I had to pick one, that would probably be it. As much as I love the states and I, lo I love uh, going to Florida, um, yeah. I think the Macau Grand Prix. I, I spoke to Alan Hyde about it, and he said just how, how amazing it is over there and how unique it is. Uh, I, I think being able to do that would be. Is, that's, I don't think you'd have any other reason to go to Macau other than the Macau Grand Prix, you know. It's kind of yeah. one of those places that you just wouldn't go to and, unless you're going there for a reason. So, uh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that would be my, probably, if I could pick one now, I'd, I'd pick yeah. that. I mean, it's it's so wide on the on the start-finish street, isn't it? And then, and it then just it's gets narrower and narrower. And yeah. And, and they, they raced GT3. I remember seeing YouTube videos of incredible races. And is it touring cars? Or the, the different types of series that go there and they mm -hmm. my goodness it's a really packed field mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. it just seems to filter in and if one person makes a bad move or makes a mistake it can have a huge effect on everybody else oh yeah i mean you had that horrifying incident with sophia flush there um yeah. which, which was terrible but uh that just goes to show how dangerous it is racing there but the pictures you get from that those events are are incredible i mean I, I do a bit of pr work as well and a driver i was working for race there and the pictures he sent me after the event were unbelievable that that really tight hairpin where overtaking is banned because <laughs> it's that that tight uh the, the, the photographers have a really good viewpoint of that and you just see all the you know the big tower blocks in the background and it looks um looks unbelievable so it must just be such a cool place to, to go and walk around and then to see cars going around there must be something really special. So, Yeah, oh, that's a thing. And mm. is there any budding commentators watching? Because obviously we're all doing a lot of esports here. Um, have you got any tips for us um, to help get our commentating um, kind of skills up to task? Uh, I, I mean, I think the thing you, you, you've got, uh, if, you, if there's no opportunities, just make your own. And that's how I managed to get into it, really. Uh, I, that That my first commentating was an opportunity that didn't actually exist. I just kind of made it myself, like filmed it and then commentated on it. Uh, now I was obviously lucky that I had access to cameras and I could go and do that. If you don't have that, then just, 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 just commentate on stuff. You know, there, you know, I, I said this to someone recently, there's nothing wrong with you commentating on uh, footage of a, of a race, you know, if, as long as you can get a clean cut of it. Uh, yeah. A sim race with you, just you and your friends, say, it doesn't have to be seen by anyone other than yourself, but it's something to practice on, isn't it? And and you can uh, listen to it back and or have someone listen to it back and see what they think. So I'd say that that's, you know, practicing is, is somewhere to start. And then just go going out there and finding opportunities uh, that, you know, you have to be realistic about where you can start. You know, you're going to be starting by commentating on, uh, on, on, you know, the first thing I did was club racing, which you know, you know, karting club racing, which is the the, the lowest form of club of, of karting, really, is goes club, national, and, and European and world. So that's where I started, and and it was such good practice to, uh, place to start because it was so intense, um, and I and I loved it. Uh, so yeah, the, there's opportunities out there. You, you've got to go looking for them, but in the meantime. You know, do, do some practice. And I'd say the opportunities are never going to come to you. You've always got to go and look for yeah. them. So just be persistent with it. And if nothing's coming of it, 
uh just you know just try try other things try new avenues you know and 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 don't be afraid to reach out to people because I, I reached out to someone who was commentating at Eurosport, uh, Tom Gaymore, and he's been so helpful to me. Uh, and it was quite funny because he took me into the Eurosport office. And then, you know, five years later, I was I was in there commentating with him at the World Endurance Championship. So, yeah, yeah, you know, as long as you work hard at it and, you know, it, it's going to happen. So, Oh, that's fantastic. Uh, I was thinking if there was a race that you could have commentated on, perhaps in Formula One or something like that. Is there a race that stands out in your mind that you would think, oh, that would have been an incredible race? And, mm. and you're saying, what would, it, what would it have been? I, I mean, I know I've mentioned it a couple of times, but I just think that Sao Paulo race, just because of how historic it now is. And I think in 20 years' time, that's going to be known as one of the, the yeah. you know, one of the best races because because of that. That or uh, I thought the Sakir race last year was amazing. Uh, yes. I would have loved to have commentated on that. I loved the idea of it as well. I thought that was great. But I'd say because of their history behind it, um, 2008 South Paolo, definitely. Yeah. Uh, just no, was... the amount of, I think for, for, for James and Martin and doing it, you know, they did such a good job of being able to follow that race because yeah. it changed. Oh, crazy. Yeah, it changed so many times. And then to have someone be a world champion for 15 seconds, you know, yeah. that, was, <laughs> you know and that was it. It just had everything. It, you know, you couldn't have written that better. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, well, it was dry for most of it, wasn't it? And then the rain started to come down towards the end. Yeah. It was just, I, and you just knew that was going to slip everything up because Hamilton yeah. was really hanging on, and then and that was the thing. So you know, it was it would have been an and I always remember yeah. at the end of the race, um, because he didn't get on the podium, he had to park his car miles away. And yeah. He, uh, when I remember when he got out of the car, and he was struggling trying to put his steering wheel back on the car, and the mm. the, 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 the trouser almost booing him. You know, you could almost feel the atmosphere. It was this electric as, as he was going out of the car and he started to walk back up the pit lane. Um, yeah. it, was, it must have been absolutely incredible. Oh, it yeah. Was, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm sure there's probably, you know, a lot of people would probably go to the center area or something like that for, for those. But for me, that was that was my first memory of F1, really, uh, my first proper memory of it. And that yeah. was that's why I would go to something like that because it, it has a, a meaning to me personally. So, oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I thought it was fantastic. Um, but my 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 one of my dreams is to commentate on the Winter Olympics. Actually, All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's it's a bit of a, I know it's a bit of a curveball because of because I'm in motorsport. But I just love I love the idea of of commentating on the Olympics in general. But I think yeah. to go and do the Winter Olympics would be would be really special and one of those things you could even if you only did it once you could always look back on and go that was that was incredible. You know, so so yeah. Right. Yeah, that's something I, I ho hopefully one day. <laughs> yeah. Well, the only Grand Prix I've ever been to live um, was the, the European Grand Prix in 1993. And that's where I saw Senna win. Um, oh, wow. I, that must have been cool. Yeah. Oh, for, I mean, for the first time, was eight, it was my 18th birthday. And, oh, really? Uh, oh, that's not bad. Yeah. Yeah. Not so a bad I, story for an 18th birthday, that. Yeah. So I literally just a few days before, and then I got the, my birthday present was the tickets to the Grand Prix uh, with my good friend and his father. So we went down there. Uh, to Donington and, and saw the whole thing. Um, and it was just amazing, the, the spectacle of it. Uh, I saw Schumacher go off in the Donington kind of chicane at the back, the far end of the circuit. Oh, just wow, like, yeah. Yards in front of us. Yeah. And then we saw Senna come round, and then he was in second place by the time he came to us. And when he came the, through the Donington loop, he was up in the first, he had gone past Prost, and then that was him away off into the distance. Um, mm -hmm. So it was, it was quite an incredible thing. But I, I imagine if you're seeing that live, and, and I know you. I saw your video when you were in in, in Belgium at Spa, um, and you were halfway up Eau Rouge, telling yeah. everyone what it was like to, um, you know, how steep it was. Because you don't really see that on on the, as much as they probably try in the coverage. You don't really get the the angles and all of that. And I mean, is what is the atmosphere really as as, as electric as, as maybe one might expect it to be, or is it something that really has to be experienced? Spa is amazing. I mean, yeah, I, I was lucky when I was there with GT Open. The um, the, the, the one of the camera guys just said, like, I, I, I mean, I, I had to go on the th on, on the Thursday, so I had the whole Friday there, and he just said, I'll take you around, you know, in practice, so you can wow. see it. Got me a tabard, and uh, I stood at the fence at Eau Rouge, leaning over. Uh, yeah. watching the GT cars go through there and it's unbelievable uh, and you really don't realise how steep it is until you go and walk it uh, yeah. we, we went and we went and walked it at the end of the day to do a, a, one of our pieces to camera 
And yeah, I was knackered by the end of it. It was quite funny, actually. So this is something not many people would have ever seen, but the the truck that goes round and cleans the circuit at the end of the day, uh, you know, goes around and kind of washes washes the circuit. It takes that truck three times to get up Eau Rouge. So, I mean, this truck is coming down out of La Source flat out and it will go halfway up Eau Rouge. Then it will come back down again <laughs> and then it will give it a second go and then it will get towards the top of Eau Rouge and then it will come flying back down <laughs> again. And then on the third attempt, it will finally get over Eau Rouge. So, yeah, seeing a, truck, seeing a truck trying to go up Eau Rouge was probably one of the funniest th- moments of the weekend, actually. So, <laughs> <laughs> It must be, I suppose, because it can only go so fast if it's cleaning the circuit. Um, yeah, well, it's got to get to the top, but it's just, it, <laughs> you know, it takes it too long to go the other way. I don't know why it just didn't go the other way around, but um, funny, yeah, it? yeah, it was very, very bizarre, very bizarre. I never thought I'd see that, but uh, I never thought I'd find that more enjoyable than watching a GT car go up there, to be honest. But <laughs> yeah. I remember watching a clip of it was when it's still in the V8 era, um, and it was from the bottom of Oru's, just just before they they kind of go to the left. Um, and they had a, somebody had stuck a camera out and was just watching them come, you know, zip by as, as yeah. something else. And with those veering engines, the, oh, the noise was just sensational um, as they as they kind of zip past. Um, and the, and the speed, I mean, they must be doing almost doing what is it about 180, 190 miles an hour, isn't it? When they kind of oh. hit bends and or maybe even more in some cases. Yeah, it's, yeah. I mean, I, I I can't imagine what it's like watching an F1 car. I got I watched the F3 cars through there, and they were. They were very, very quick, um, but I can't imagine what it's like watching an F1 car go out there. So, yeah, the yeah. marshal loved it. You know, the, the marshal team there let us kind of lean right over and stuff, and um, and yeah, it was really special. So, uh, seeing that was was really cool. Yeah, and what would be your ideal people to 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 interview? Um, because obviously you're getting into all the, the motorsport. Um, you have met some already, some very famous motorsport names. Um, what, who would be the ones that you haven't met so far that you would love to interview? Uh, oh, that's a tough question. Um, I mean, if if the, the great, I, I I'm not too sure really. I, I'd like to. I, I think speaking to someone like Jensen Button would be quite cool. I I think he'd make a really good good interview, and um, particularly with the stuff he's doing now. Um, yeah. I don't. I don't know in terms of kind of legendary names, which ones would uh would stick out to me really um if you met nigel mansell at goodwood and yeah fast, i think like, nigel would be quite fun i think wouldn't he He'd be quite i think that would be great actually yeah he he would be a pretty good one to interview definitely uh he he's gonna have so many stories to tell isn't he so i'd say doing an evening chat with him for example would be you know would, would be good where you can actually have a good sort of couple of hours with him or so i i think that would be yeah, he'd, he'd, he'd be a good one to, to do, definitely. But if we're talking more younger drivers, yeah, I think I think JB would be would be a good one to to have a chat with. You know, I, I have his book, actually. So that was... Oh, yeah. So, yeah. yeah, so it'd be cool to, to go and speak to him. Um, I, I just like like his personality in the, in the sport as well. I think it was needed at that time. Um, I think Lando's the kind of up-and-coming one now that's, gonna, that's bringing that personality into the sport, isn't it? So... Um, yeah. I think George Russell is always doing really well, isn't he? I mean, I think yeah, he's yeah, he's matured very. He, he was he's a mature driver already for his age. I mean, he, he I know that that may may not have shown at Imola, but I think how he how he handled it after was, um, you know, showed showed his maturity. So, so so yeah, you know, I think someone like a, a Damon would be quite good to, to have a chat with as well. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think stories, isn't it amazing? Yeah. yeah with something else yeah um, exactly yeah and I, I think he does a great job with the coverage on sky and i, I think yeah. he'd he'd be great to chat to definitely yeah him, him and johnny herbert when they once did a grid walk I think oh, when, yeah when, when, yeah when Mark couldn't do it and so they they, they got him they got him and, and James, johnny herbert to do it it was the most hilarious thing i've ever seen um I think oh, that's, when, yeah Johnny's Johnny's probably my new one now. I, 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 we're changing right. We're changing live. I think. Yeah, John, Johnny's going to go to the top. Hundred percent. I'd love. Yeah. I'd love to interview. I think he. I've met him once, um, yeah. and he was really, really nice. I've met him. A, I, I got to interview him once actually. Um, All right. Wow. Yeah. yeah at, at the Autosport show, and he was amazing. He was so. He was so kind. He's. He's as nice as he is on TV. Uh, yeah. And he, he seems like he's he, a lovely. Person. Yeah, 
and I, I was only just starting out at that time, so he could see I was quite nervous. But he, he, he kind of settled me down really easily, and he, he was such a nice guy to speak to. So now I'm a bit further on down the line. I think to, to, to do another interview with him would be really, really good. So yeah, oh well, there's plenty there, plenty there to keep you going. And, yeah. Uh, now we've got some some funny questions here as well. Uh, one is from my good friend Jonathan, who actually was with me on the day we saw Senna win in 1993. Um, and he says, when Hugh takes me to a European Grand Prix on his YouTube revenue, um, which one would you recommend? What's that? <laughs> What's that? Well, I go to a European Grand Prix? Yeah, John says, I've got to pay for him to go to a Grand Prix or take him to a Grand Prix. Um, and right. he says, which European Grand Prix venue would you recommend? Oh, uh, of the ones I've of the ones I've been to, I th I think Nür Nürburgring was quite was was a good one. Um, yeah. But yeah, yeah, r r yeah, Nurburgring. I, I, or, I, or I'd say actually no, Monza. Ah, uh, Monza. Yeah, that's yeah. It. Because I, I commentated there last year, but I can imagine with the uh, Tifosi there, it's something special. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd say you gotta go to Monza for the. I mean the the three the two the two best for atmosphere are Silverstone and Monza. So if yeah. you you know, and, and if you've done Silverstone, then yeah, Mon Monza hundred percent. Yeah, I know it, it does look always amazing when the a car goes up in the air and then they're on the podium and then you see the Ferrari flags being lifted by the crowds and all yeah. the whole thing go onto the track at the end. Yeah. Oh fun. yeah, I was. I, we went out on the po this. We were there the week after F one, and we went out on the podium to watch the start of the uh, European TCR race, uh, TCR yeah. Europe race, and watching them. I stood on the podium and watching them come by on the first lap was incredible. Um, yeah. I don't think you could pay to get tickets on the podium, but uh, <laughs> yeah, to go to go to like the Ascari chicane or, or something like that, yeah, would be would be amazing. I think. Yeah, I always remember from from the early nineties when Murray Walker introduced the Grand Prix, um, and he was he was standing on the grid at Monza, and he was saying, "This is where Nuvolari and all these famous old drivers had raced over the years." And mm. his great quote was, uh, "Literally, it was Grand Prix history." literally mm. oozes from the tarmac, you know, and, and only he could get away with that, you know, but it was, it was yeah. fantastic to be ready um, for Monza and, and then it lit up and, you know, in the morning they tend to have that fog, you know, that kind of dew that kind of eventually mm. rises as the sun comes through the, the clouds. Um, anyway, mm. it seems like it's, it, it's, it's quite a place um, for sure. But um, oh, it's been absolutely fantastic. Um, to have you on the show, Chris. I can't believe it's nearly an hour um, that, you've been, that we've been, that been piling on the questions to you um, to keep it to, um, to keep the whole things going. Um, but it's really, really, it's fantastic. I was, I was going to say, we've got a few league races and championships coming up. Do you, would you are you considering uh, commentating on, on a lot of esports uh, in, in the near future? Or is your time now taken up with, with all this new presenting? Uh, yeah, I've still, you know, I've got plenty of love for esports still. Um, yeah, Le Mans Esports has taken a bit of a break at the moment, but um, as soon as that's back going, I'll, I'll, I'll love to be a part of that again if they'll have me. Um, and the 24 hour Le Mans virtual was, was an incredible experience. Uh, you know, it got watched by 22 million people, it was unbelievable. Um, so to be to if they do that again, which I really, really hope they do. Uh, to be a part of that again would would be great, but um, yeah, there, I mean, there's there's loads of esports out there. I think I need I think I need to try and get myself get myself into some more now because um, I, I love doing it. So yeah, if, if anyone watching, yeah, <laughs> fancies having me for an esports championship, yeah, I'm always interested. Yeah, um, yeah, I I, I think it's great, uh, great doing esports. Uh, the, the ones I've got to do have been great. I got to do. The isolation series, which was on BT Sport, which was really cool as well. I don't know if you ever saw that, but that was no, that it was a crazy it. idea for a championship that really took off. So, um, so yeah, that's be and I just find the esports scene one, the racing is always fantastic, uh, mm. and the people in it are so friendly as well. So, yeah, you never really get a boring event. So, yeah, it's always fun. Yeah. And yeah. I, think it's really, I think it's motorsport fans as well, isn't it? And I think it's, I, I always. Say that what I've been doing my, my, when I do stream my racing as well as, as doing the interviews is that I think what's lovely about sim racing and the esports is that I think it's really generating a new generation of motorsport fans because this is almost like your way into motorsport. Whether you're racing as a sim racer, whether you're watching it on YouTube, um, it, it gets you back into the idea that motorsport is something fantastic. Um, and then, so when as things open up now that thankfully COVID is on its way out, 
we can actually get back to see it happening in, 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 in reality as well. Um, but do you think there'll be more big events? Because, I mean, obviously, before COVID, there was the big world championships for GT Sport, and it seemed like there was more and more coming. There was the, 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 was it the Sim Conference, and it was at the Newburgh Ring, or uh, Newburgh GP Ring, wasn't it, at, uh, in September a couple of years ago? And that, that had everything. They had a, a massive, mm. all, their, all their events going on. Yeah. Like, hopefully that will come back, and, and even more so. Um, do you think it's quite a rosy future for, for kind of sim racing events and things like that? I think so. Yeah, I mean, I think 2020 really uh, threw it into the spotlight in a in a way none of us could have predicted. Um, and I think it it highlighted the quality of it. And and it and it, what it actually did was forced the drivers to to take to do it. I mean, some of them did it anyway. Verstappen and Norris did it anyway. But the rest yeah. of them had nothing else to do, so they started doing it as well. And I think they. Yeah, you find that. I mean, I've come across sim races and I've looked at the grid and gone, why is there not more people watching this? Because there's like, you know, drivers from the World Endurance Championship in this, you know, and they're racing, um, you know, just y your top esports drivers or, or even just your top league racers in esports as well. Uh, yeah. And I think one thing the esports does is it gives the people that, you know, didn't have the clearly the financial backing to, to make it. Uh, as far as single seaters or something, a chance to race these guys uh, and get do it on live on live TV. So uh, I think it it's provides opportunities for you know to to people that spend hours taking it very seriously. Uh, they don't have the money to to do it to do race a real car, but uh, but now they can race the people who have done that and uh, and have a good time with it. I mean, even when I did Le Mans virtual, Jensen Button said to us that he basically threw his his book out the window and said to the esports driver you teach me everything you know now and and they became the driver coaches of of the esports teams um but uh yeah i i think the future is very bright i mean I, I don't think it obviously 2020 made it unbelievably big it had to come down after that but uh i think it's opened the door i think i think the broadcasters uh, and you know the big companies are starting to really recognize what it's like i mean we've got a new a new touring car game that's been announced haven't we um i oh, think yeah. World Endurance have got something in the pipeline as well so so yeah there's uh, nascar have just bought out a new game i think and there's a new yeah. karting yeah. game coming out and uh Ford Marie have got their stuff so yeah yeah i i think I think we're about a year, six months to a year away from a real, real big turn in, in, in esports again. So, um, yeah, yeah it's, it's going to be, I mean, see how Touring Guard game is going to be fantastic. So, and the, oh, the yeah, it's one as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And, when, and when GT Sport is able to do live events again, that, that's going to be, that's going to be amazing. So, so yeah, yeah, the future for it is very, very bright. And I, I hope to be a part of it still, that's all, you know, when it, when it does. Fantastic. Well, one quick question before you go um, from Tom Pettifer. Um, a good question here. Just come up oh, in the no. It says, oh, would, no. you ever go, <laughs> would you ever go back to Rye House commentating? <laughs> <laughs> the guys down there are amazing. Honestly, it's called R uh, RHPK and uh, Pro Kart Racing, four hours. And uh, yeah, on great fun. Great fun. Um, Chaz did it. Chaz, who you had on the show. I couldn't yeah. go at the weekend. He went and he went and did it, and uh, and he yeah he said he absolutely loved it, you know. Uh, so so yeah yeah you know I I I I, I couldn't make it sadly because I was getting my vaccine done, but um yeah I I I love the guys there. I think they're they're, they're such a cool team. So uh, I'm definitely going to go down there and do a race some point this year. Oh, that's great. And he also says, um, do you think they should make another kart racer film with the Watts Davis engine? <laughs> Yes, yeah, and if they need a new actor, they should ask him. Hundred percent, <laughs> even though he can't drive. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic! And one last little question here: your favorite driver of all time? I think we might know the answer to this. Oh, uh, I don't. Oh, I, I don't know. I mean, I. Yeah, I, I'm not too sure who 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 my favorite is of all time. I, I think Lewis is the best of all time. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, I'd say I'd say if I had to pick a pick a best driver, it would be it would be him, just because I I think now we're finally seeing that his mm. well, I think people can put that 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 it's down to the car out the window now. Red Bull have 
actually have probably a better car than they do. Uh, yeah. and in my interview with Montoya, he did kind of say that as well. He said, we're now seeing how good Lewis is. Um, I don't know in terms of favourite drivers, though. Yeah, yeah, it's I, funny. I, I, I loved I loved Jensen. I always liked Jensen. I thought he was a he was a, and when I saw him win the world championship, I thought that was just amazing. So yeah. I haven't yeah. met him and knowing how nice he is, I I, I think yeah, I'll I'll go with Jensen as as my as my favourite, but Lewis is Lewis is the best for me. Yeah, yeah, because I think Jensen was so underrated. I mean, they didn't treat him well at all at Williams when he first came in, and they really gave him a very hard time. And even then at Renault as well, he got quite a hard time. But when he went to BAR and he had a pretty dreadful car, he still was consistent and he got mm-hmm. better and better and eventually he won that race. It was something like a week after he went on top gear. He'd been on the, the top gear star in a, in a reasonably priced car with, with Clarkson. And, yeah. and he would do anything. He would he would, he would would forget about World Championships. So for his first win, that would be his thing because he hadn't won a race at that point. And then, of course, he won in Hungary from 14th on the grid. So it was something... Yeah. That you was an, what was that 2006? I think that, yeah, that was yeah. an amazing race, and for British yeah. fans, that was that, that was, was amazing. It, yeah, I've yeah. never I've never really had a favourite, but if I had to pick one, I'd say yeah, probably 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 him because just because of how he never really gave up and and then went and won the world. I mean, I know that car he had was was amazing, but um, mm-hmm. it just You've kind of proved to make it happen, haven't you? You've got yeah, to I think happen. yeah, if he he, he was uh, he was around. I think the story there is he was around for that opportunity to come his way, whereas a lot of other people would have lost their head and or thrown in the towel. But he was there for that opportunity to present himself, and he had yeah. a good personality, which which meant that they wanted him in the team. So, um, so yeah, I, I I think I think yeah, he's he's definitely up there for me. Yeah, oh, it's fantastic. And that's what motorsport does, isn't it? And you do get these wonderful personalities and characters. Um, and, uh, and I think it's, it, that's what makes it some, such a great sport. I do yeah. miss in some ways some of the old, because I used to watch all the old Senna and Mansell videos way in the early 90s because they used to really go into their whole history and what really motivated mm-hmm. them. And you'd see them like Senna in his house in Brazil. He owned this estate in Brazil. And it was an amazing thing to watch um, and to see what they were really like out with it all, you know, but it, it gave you their characters. And maybe there's a little bit of that coming back now with certain drivers um, kind of being a bit more revealing as to who they are and, and so on and so forth. But um, but no, it's, it, is, it is absolutely fantastic. Well, I wish you all the best. Stay on the line before we finish because we'll, we'll, we'll have a quick chat afterwards. But yes. um, we wish you all the best for uh, for your future career here. And of course, for the new um, presenting role as well, which is absolutely fantastic. And let everyone know, how can they see you on TV? What, what should they do to make sure they can see you live? Well, I'm, I'm commentating on the Formula Regional European Championship by Alpine. That is on this weekend. We're supporting F1 at Barcelona. We're live for qualifying tomorrow, and then we're racing Saturday, Sunday. So, yeah, if you go on their YouTube channel or Facebook, I'm commentating for them this weekend and all season. And then motorsport.tv, there is a, a whole section for Motorsport TV Live and three bulletins a day for you with, with all your news. So, yeah, yeah, I, I'm next in the studio next Thursday. So, uh, but yeah, we're, we're always doing it. It's on every single day. So, and, and I'd say there's an app, a Motorsport TV app. If you get that, you, you'll get all your news into that and you can you can watch our bulletins three times a day, which every day we have a special guest. So, so yeah, de- definitely tune in. Fantastic. Well, you've been absolutely an amazing guest. Um, Thank and you for me. What it's like being a commentator and meeting all these fantastic drivers and, and that incredible experience. But to everyone who is watching tonight, we also we hit the 360 subscriber barrier uh, yesterday, which is brilliant. So thank you very much for all the new subscribers and existing subscribers who have been with us all this time. And if you like lots of interviews like the one we've done tonight, then make sure you subscribe to the channel because we've got a big back catalogue of people like Super GT, of David Perel, of Tijney. Mm-hmm. Um, and many others, and hopefully others to Tijney. come as well in the future. We've got Tijney, yes, we've got Tijney. He, he's a great guy. He's a great he's guy. Great. And he is very, very good. Yeah, very good. We've had Rory um, from Erias. We've had all every all the top guys and many of the smaller YouTubers as well. Like last week, we had Darren uh, Turner, who was fantastic. So we have a good, a really, really great range of drivers that we've interviewed and all have been really, really good um, to have on the show. And we've also had the Amuzon, uh, some of the female racers as well. Uh, and we're trying to get a few more too to come on the show. But to everyone who's been watching and who'll be listening to this on the podcast, you've been watching the Car Sim and Race Driver Show. Now you've got a, a you probably don't, you, you may be familiar with our um, our kind of ending quote. Um, it is, of course, drive fast and try not to crash. And if you do, 
you might just win the race at the first corner. Perhaps, perhaps I could ask you, Chris, to, to, to finish off with our famous quote. I've, I've forgotten it already. <laughs> uh, putting you on the spot there. My memory's that bad. Yeah. <laughs> it is drive fast and try not to crash. Drive yeah. fast and try not to crash. And if you do, you might just win the race at the first drive, corner. So drive fast, try not to crash. And if you do, you might just win the race at the first corner. Thanks very much. Stay on the line. And to everyone else, bye just now.